Okay, so today we have the Cryoreg C7 CPU cooler um, reviewing. I'm not going to go over this one too much. This is a really popular cooler. And mainly what we're going to do is uh, we're going to compare it to the cooler here, which is the Cooler Master Gemini, 2, Gemini M4. And we're also going to com compare it to a stock Intel cooler just because. I have a stock one and they're basically free. We're going to be putting it on a 6700K, not delitted, and it, we will be doing stock and overclock. So here's the cryo red cooler. It's actually really cool looking. It comes with uh, thermal paste, cryo red thermal paste, screwdriver, box and some mounting uh, spacers and nuts. So like I said, I'm not gonna be going over this cooler too much in depth, because there's a ton of information about it. We're just gonna put it on this board here and uh, do some benchmarks and show you some graphs. So I just got done with the benchmarks. About the same size as the Intel stock heatsink. The same uh, height rather. The Intel stock heatsink has almost no mass and is pretty worthless. So yeah, I was able to get a healthy overclock, high voltage. It didn't keep temperatures as well as say like a really big Noctua cooler. We're talking 70s, 80 degrees overclocked. Um, basically to the max the CPU would overclock too and I even threw a little bit extra voltage at it just to get some more heat generated um, it did almost the same as this cooler master cooler the Gemini uh, M4 and the cooler master cooler has a bigger fan it seems like it has more fins more mass and of course it's taller so one would expect it would be better than this one the cryo rig C7 but really it's not they're about the same. They're one or two degrees difference, and I can chalk that up to margin of error or different ambient temperatures. The Cryoreg C7 does come in a couple different variations. Um, this is the standard one right here. Um, there is a copper one that's exactly the same as this, except it's all copper. There's no nickel plating, there's no aluminum, it's just all copper has the same fan on it. This will mount to pretty much anything. So it's actually a really good option if you're looking for a small cooler for a really small form factor and you wanna get some overclock on your CPU or maybe you have a big CPU, say eight plus cores, you wanna throw it in a small form factor build, this will cool it down and even allow some room for overclocking. I was pushing 1.32 volts-ish around there so with that voltage, it would raise the TDP up quite a bit, which means that this cooler is pretty much good for anything stock. It's almost as quiet as this one. Uh, this has a 120 millimeter fan. This is like a 80, 92 millimeter fan here, but I can't, I couldn't hear it. Not really. Of course the Intel heatsink, it, it, it's loud. It's not very good. So it's much quieter than this one. So that was actually surprising as well. It's quiet, small cools down, does its job well. There's only one plug. You don't have a bunch of fans. It's only like $50. So yeah, it's a little bit expensive for what it is, for what it can cool down. But at the same time, for a decent all-in-one, you're looking 100, 120. For a really good air cooler, probably around 70 to 100. So this is a little bit below all of those things. And so is the price. So I think it's a good buy. It does its job well. 